Hi, I'm Brian Freer, tutoring High School Biology. Today's topic, Gregor Mendel and Planet Squares. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who came up with the idea of alleles, which led to genes and ultimately genetics as we know it. Mendel was working with pea plants in the abbey when he noticed some pretty weird things. Starting out with a tall plant and a short plant, the pea generation, if you will, the parent generation, he crossed them and produced offspring. All his offspring were tall. This is the F1 generation. He crossed two of the, his offspring again and produced the F2 generation. But in this one, three out of every four plants was tall, but the fourth one was short. Gregor Mendel saw this and went, WHAT?! Somehow this short trait had skipped a generation, so he sat down and started thinking. And, well, he came up with the idea of alleles. Alleles are the different forms of a trait, what we understand now as different forms of a gene. Let me give you an example. Let's say our gene is for eye color. One type of allele could be brown eyes, and the other allele could be blue eyes. In terms of plants, we could say that one allele would be tall plants, and the other allele would be short plants. See, the genetic makeup of something is known as the genotype, and what is finally expressed is known as the phenotype. However, these can be different. See, everything has two alleles for the same trait. I have two alleles for eye color. These plants have two alleles for their height. Let me start drawing out those alleles right now. This tall plant has two tall genes of two big T's. The short plant has two short genes. I'm going to put down two little T's. You might be wondering why I'm putting down T for short. Well, let me explain. See, Gregor Mendel also came up with the idea of dominant and recessive traits. If you have a dominant trait in your genotype, no matter what else you have there, your phenotype will always show the dominant trait. If you have a recessive trait, though, then the phenotype will be recessive only if you have two recessive genes. Whenever we start writing out our allele notation, if you will, the letter is taken from the first letter of the dominant gene. In this case, tall. The second type of allele, the recessive, is shown by a lowercase version of that letter, in this case, short. When Mendel crossed these, he ended up with a bunch of plants that had both a big T and a little t in them. Since they all had a big T, they all expressed the dominant trait, tallness. However, when he crossed those together, he ended up with the following genotypes. One big T, big T, tall. Two big T, little t's, both tall. And finally, a little t, little t. You might wonder how we got all this. Well, we, end, we used a Punnett square. Gregor Mendel had to work backwards, but eventually came up with more or less the same idea. The Punnett square is basically a statistical representation of offspring. Here is a very quick Punnett square. We'll put in the first two plants right here. And this demonstrates what Gregor Mendel called the segregation of alleles. I know it sounds scary. It's really not. It just means you split up the alleles when you create offspring. That's just what we did here. We split up one big T from the other big T and one of the plants and split the two little T's into little plants. Now all we have to do is drop down our genes. Take the big T and drop it into this box and this box and drop this big T in the, these two boxes. We then send the little T across the sides and this little T across the sides. And look, we have the genotypes of the F1 generation. For the record, every generation after the parent generation, the P generation, is F and a number. The first generation has F1, then F2, F3, so on and so forth. Okay, so we now see the genotypes for the F1 generation. But what if we cross two members of the F1 generation? In other words, two big T, little t's. That's what Mendel did. And the genotypes will change. First off, we drop down this big T. Let's also drop down the little t. Let's pull this big t across and pull the little t across. Notice, these are the genotypes for the F2 generation. One big t, big t, two big t, little t's, and one little t, little t. Now keep in mind that Punnett squares are just a statistical representation. This really means that one out of every four plants will have a big t, big t genotype, half of the plants will have a big t, little t, and the last quarter will have a little t, little t. This doesn't mean that the plants will conform perfectly to this. If we had four plants, one of them might not have this big T, big T. It's all just statistics. Even so, you will need to know how to do these, so keep that in mind. Now that I've told you about dominant and recessive genes, 
I'm going to bring some more into the picture. The first one is the idea of codominance. This is where both of the traits show. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have a rooster and a chicken. They both have, let's say the chicken is white and the rooster is black. We're going to call the gene in this case, we're going to call it color. So we're going to have big C. Since they're co-dominant, both genes are dominant. It's always going to be big C. But now we're going to add an extra letter up here in superscript. In this case, a B for black. So here's our black rooster, and here's our white chicken. When we put these together, we have a CB, CW thing in each one of these boxes. You might go, okay, what does that mean? If they're both dominant, then what happens? Well, in codominance, you actually see both traits. You end up with a speckled offspring, one that has black spots and white spots at the same time. Of course, if you mated one of those, then you get up with some different statistics. With two CBCWs, we end up with a lot of different types of chickens. In this case, one CBCB produces a black offspring, one CBCW produces a speckled offspring, another CBCW for another speckled, and lastly, two CWs for a white offspring. Remember, in codominance, both are dominant, both will show. This is different from incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, the traits will mix. The easiest way to show this is through color. This time we're going to start looking at flowers. Let's say we have a white flower and a red flower. For reference, when you're showing incomplete dominance, you do not do a superscript, you just show letters. So for the red flower, we'll have R and R. For the white flower, we'll have W and W. See that they're not the same letter. That shows incomplete dominance as opposed to, diff as opposed to traits that are both dominant and recessive. An RW flower, as all these will be, will be pink, because the red and white will mix. Again, if you cross an RW with an RW, you get one red, one white, and two pinks. And that's how to work a Punnett square, and that's how genes and alleles work. To recap, Gregor Mendel crossed pea plants. When he crossed a tall and a short plant, his first generation had all tall plants, and the second had three out of four tall and one short. This was because of the idea of genes and alleles. The genotype is the genetic makeup, and the phenotype is what shows. In terms of the F1 generation, the first generation, all of them had the genotype big T, little t. The dominant gene, the big T, for tallness, showed in all of them. The little t was there, but didn't show. When he crossed two of those together, he ended up with three of them with the dominant gene big T, and only one of them with the double little t, which produced the recessive trait. For reference, whenever you write dominant and recessive traits, take the first letter of the dominant trait and capitalize it to show the dominant trait, and si bring in a lowercase of that same letter for the recessive trait. You can put these into a Punnett square. Here you have to segregate the alleles. You, you split up one allele and bring it to one side, one box, and take the other allele and put it in the other box. Then just bring all the alleles into the boxes inside the Punnett square, and you'll have the genotype for the next generation. Remember, though, this is just a statistical representation. It does not necessarily have to conform to those statistics. Also, there are co-dominant traits, and with both traits show, and incomplete dominant traits, where the traits will mix. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.